all right so i'll like i want to go over again the most actual worthless modules in the game all right so let's start with battleships okay so for battleships i think yeah that's what i'm doing for a video i think that for battleships the most like worthless one would probably be for the magazine one of course there's really no point unless you legit are like a new player like if you're a new player to game right the magazine modification could would be nice as a new player like if you have no signals of any kind you want to do no death flags and such i feel like that would be like the best for sure 100 percent. this would be the best the damage control it can be nice for tank builds yeah the auxiliary is good for secondary builds and the main arm is good for just regular but the magazine ones is like highly the most worthless so really there's no point in taking this unless you're like a new player to the game you can take it and then once you like get to higher level you have more signals for death flags and whatnot then you could remove this and put on main armament or, or whatever else you want for the second slot uh both of them are technically good there's not really a worthless one's more of like a personal preference like sometimes some ships are more likely to get their engines knocked out so you pick this one and then for main for the damage control if you're just trying to get less fires you would take this one instead for like more for tank builds this one would be really nice yeah yeah, yeah robert so like if you're doing more of a tank build, gamma control will be good to be able to reduce the fire and flooding chances are really nice. So you take this one or the engine room protection. If your ship is more likely to get your engine knocked out, like on certain battleships. For battleships in the third slot, the the anti-air is by far the most is the most pathetic one to pick. There is no reason nowadays for a battleship to be take the AA gun modification. Like, why would you nerf your ability to have better dispersion? Why would you make it where you're not going to have as good secondaries or have a slower turret diverse if you're going to go that route? So I would say never pick the entire guns modification for a battleship. That is like, no, never, never, ever, ever. It's never worth it. Never, ever, ever. For the fourth one, I would say the most worthless one for a battleship at this point is the airstrike modification. There isn't any battleship at this point that you want to build into airstrikes, which is like the ASW. There are no battleships with the Golden Lou airstrikes. So there's really no point in ever actually building into this at the moment. Like, the propulsion and steering is more of a personal preference on which one you like. And if you're going for more of a tank build like Santa Montana, Ohio, uh, possibly a Vermont, then you could take a damage control to just be able to get yourself a more of a tank build to survive longer. Other than that, you'll take propulsion or steering. And we were just talking about this earlier, where at this point, Torpedo Lookout is almost pointless. It's like, why would you take this where you get a one point kilometer, like assured, when you could just increase the torpedo acquisition range by 25% and get a bonus torpedo protection? There's, there is no point in building, like if you want to build for torpedo acquisition, you can build it here where you get actual torpedo protection. Like you can do both, but the range isn't going to be like three kilometers. Flirious. Yeah, there you go. It's right there. Oh. The chat. Oh, thanks. It's not gonna. It's not gonna get yeah, there. Yeah, I can totally use that. I can totally use that. But for battleships as well, even if you have a three-kilometer spotting for torp, you're not gonna be able to dodge it in time normally. It would have to be a very mobile battleship to be able to do it. Like it's better to say concealment, and the ship consumable modification is also pretty worthless. It's only ten percent. It's only 10%, right? If it was more than 10%, I could see it actually being good, but it's only 10%. That's like nothing. 
If it was 20 or 25%, I could see it potentially being a good pick over concealment. But at this point, no. Like these two are more just baits for battleships. Like this one, maybe, maybe. Depending, like it was like a faster moving battleship, maybe. For the final slot, main army, like all these are good picks for battleships, just depending on how you build it. Like secondaries, of course, you do this one. Gun range, you would do this one if you want longer range. And main batteries for, you know, quicker reload. But normally, if you're going to build into range on a battleship, it's just going to have shorter range. Like for the John Bart, you don't need range. You already have 24.5. So you would just build into reload. I know that on my curve first, I build into reload on my curve first, even though it doesn't have the longest range, but you have a spotter which can compensate for that, so that's why. What's up, Eugene? How's it going, man? So for cruisers, I would say it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, you can use spotting. The spotting aircraft model is actually pretty nice for some cruisers that build into it for their special abilities of uh, the new premium riga the tin can or the tin can or however you say it that thing is actually nice to build into spotter for that ability so i can see a use for the, for that the damage control though for cruisers aren't as worth it just due to how short the dcp is so i don't really think it's really worth it for cruisers and it's the same rule of thumb as I said earlier. Like, if you're going to build into secondaries, then, yeah, you build a secondaries. Uh, if you don't have any detonation flags, then the magazine motivation would be good. If you want to save money and just do that. But you're still likely to get detonated anyway. Like, this is going to be most important on DDs, where if you don't have any detonations. Because pretty much if you don't run a detonation flag on a DD, you're going to get detonated so this is very important module for DD players or cruiser players that don't have any detonation flags. It just makes it where you're not going to detonate in a match as, as, as likely. But you're still going to detonate somewhat. So we'll see. Uh, in the next slot, I would uh, pretty much... Uh, like, Hydro's good... Like, all these are good, but the DFAA one, if the particular cruiser only has DFAA, you could build into it. But nowadays, it's not really worth to build into this at all. It's better just to build into damage cons to reduce fires and flood chance and the engine room protection, depending upon what ship. So I feel like the DFAA one's more of like a like a... Like a trick one. It's like, oh yeah, you can build into it, but it only increases it by 20% and it makes you have a cooldown of 10 seconds. Which means you instead of it being 40 seconds of action time, you get 48 seconds and you would get it 8 seconds quicker, so it's 72 seconds. So, there's that. Uh, in the third slot... Again, I have to say that, like, the entire one has to be, like, more of a trick one to pick. Like, secondaries are good for certain secondary DDs, like the Napoli, sorry, cruisers, like the Napoli, or what else is there? The, um, what is there? Uh, Schroeder, Michelangelo, those kind of, those kind of ship secondaries are really good on there. Yeah. Like, pretty much if you're not, like, if you don't have a secondary ship, like, this is pretty much worthless to you. If you're building into regular ships and then, like, if you're building into secondaries, this is perfect for you. If you're building into regular ships, that skills, that's worthless. Don't take it. And same with, like, the anti-air. There's, like, almost no reason to build into anti-air nowadays. So I really don't see the point in this module, but the aiming, traverse... For cruisers, I think the diverse is practically worthless as well. They're real like there isn't that much reason to take traverse when you're trying to get more accurate guns. I don't know. I don't really take traverse on any cruisers at all. 
Like most ships, you're trying to get better accuracy for the cruisers. I think the only cruiser that I would ever maybe take it on is the MOSFA. Just because of how slow the turret divert is. But at the same time, I'd rather take aiming so I get those pinpoint shots. And that's like the only reason why I would take it like that, maybe. For your for like the 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 four slot. All of these are good choices except for the airstrike again. The airstrikes are really good for cruisers that have the golden Lou or the Dutch like the Dutch airdrops, like the Golden Lou. There's a few other premium tier eight Dutch cruisers. Let me see real quick. Like the D7, the Von uh, Spiek. There's a few, there's a few other like good airstrikes where you build into the actual airstrike. But, and also the depth charge, mo okay. Also the depth charge modification. If you see this modification, just throw it out the window. There is no reason for you to build your four slot into depth charges when you like it's only two, right? Only two additional chapters. It's like that's nothing. Like two charges. Like cool. You get two more charges of depth charges. That's gonna make it like, yeah, it's nice to get more depth charges, but at the same time, one, are you gonna get a guarantee of a of them in a match? And two, are you even going to get close enough to use those depth charges on a sub? And that's a good question. Are you even going to get close enough as a cruiser to get, like, to be able to use it on a sub? Most of the time, no. They're going to stay outside of your distance. You're never going to get close enough. So there's no point in building into this. You'd rather build into DCP for better fire control, propulsion, or steering, depending upon the cruiser. Uh, for the fifth slot, uh, uh, honestly, the assured lookout system could potentially be a good pick. Potentially, I've never personally taken it. Normally, for a cruiser, I would take concealment for better concealment, so you actually can go dark. Or steering modifications if I'm doing an open water build. I've never taken ship consumables. This is like one of my least actually taken modules. Pretty much. It's like, this is like, yeah. If it was 20%, I could see it being worth more, but 10%, nah. But potentially for the torpedo lookout, it could potentially be good if it, the ship is just going to be open watering the whole time. But normally, if you're open watering the whole time, you're just going to take steering gears. So this isn't even really like a pick. It's like, eh, it's like, whatever, you're not going to take it, so. But with how many subs are in the game or how annoying they are, then maybe in the future this will be worth it. Yeah, like, it's always a choice between concealment and steering gears. The con the consumables are really never worth it, and the torpedoes are never, like, never really worth it. And the final slot, you would just do main armament, uh range or secondaries if you're going to be building pure secondaries like michelangelo then this would probably be a good one for you just because of how raw the dpm is on the michelangelo like pretty much it's this is for secondary ships that are using pretty much secondaries for their raw damage if you're doing using more of your main guns and you go with reload range though yeah it's pretty good for the german cruisers German cruisers definitely need that range. Yeah, you're definitely true. Definitely true. Okay. So let's do the DDs. So for DDs, um, I said this earlier, DCP I don't think is really worth it for DDs because they already have such a short DCP time. 40% isn't really going to help that at all. Like, it's going to go from 5 seconds to 7 seconds. That That isn't worth it. You want to go with main armament? Uh, yeah. The auxiliary armament? Yeah, yeah the, just throw that in the trash. Throw that in the trash, please. This is absolutely worthless. You do not need entire amount survivability and secondary amount survivability on a DD. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but no. 
No matter what happens, if a ship hits you with HE, -E, it is going to knock out stuff no matter what. I'm sorry, but you're a DD. You're not, your anti air isn't going to last long no matter what you do. And you don't need to build just into the anti air protection anyway. It's, that's pointless. You need to build into protecting your torpedoes, your main guns. You need to build into that. Now, if you don't have any signals for detonation, like the Juliet Charlie signals for detonations, just build into magus modification instead so that you, you that you that you detonate less in matches. That's the best way to build into that one. For the next one, it's either gonna be damage caught engine room. DFAA really isn't worth building into. You only get a 20% boost and you get a cooldown 10% quicker. So you would get a 48 second action time and it would go down to about 55 something second cooldown, but you really don't need to build into that. You can just build into Hydro where you're actually able to use your Hydro more if you do have a Hydro DD. I'll personally take this one if you're gonna do that. But most of the time, if you're just a regular, just Torp DD or regular Gumbo DD, I would take damage control or engine room depending upon your preference for that. For the third slot, it would really depend on if you're more of a torpedo boat or a gunboat. More of a gunboat, you're going to take aiming. If you're more of a torpedo boat, you would take uh, torpedo tubes. The entire modification, literally worthless. Don't take it. Really worthless. The main battery modification to the Traverse is, is really good on Ds that has really slow turret diverse. I think I put this on the clip bear. I don't remember if I do. I think I took this on the Colbert so that when I'm moving really quick, I'm able to like keep my guns turned. Because the Club Air already has accurate guns at range. They're already accurate enough to where you're just trying to set more fires. So the, the Traverse can be good on that one, or maybe the Kaba. The Kaba can work too. Don't really need aiming all the time. Because you're trying to be able to stay mobile and turn a lot, so you're able to dodge. And with the turret traverse, you're able to do that a lot more rather than with just aiming. For the four slots, the airstrikes, it's only gonna it's only available for I think the Trump at this point is the only DD with an actual airstrike. And since the ship is built around the airstrikes, you can build into it. It makes it where you can start fires more with it. Like, use the airstrikes to start fires, get in the DCP, and get flooding damage to your torps. It's pretty much a good way to do it. Depth charge modifications. I don't really see a point in you building this at all on anything. I honestly don't see a point at all in doing it. Like, why would you? When you can build better into more propulsion, you can stay alive longer, or steering where you're actually able to stay alive more by just being able to survive with these. Or if you want to build more in a tank, you can do this one. But normally for DDs, you always want to take propulsion or steering. It's just more of a personal preference. No, Halford doesn't have the airstrike modification. No, it doesn't. Uh-uh. No, so it's a hybrid. Not It doesn't have airstrikes. Uh, For DDs, the actual torpedo lookout could potentially be nice for them. Since they do they can actually react to torps better so if you're doing more of an open water build potentially you could actually build more into instead of taking concealment you could take st uh, steering gears or torpedoes just to make sure you never actually eat torps because there's a lot of times when i'm in a club bear where if i would have had this i would have been able to dodge the torp with those more stealthy torps so this potentially could be good for DDs, but this ship consumable one, that's just a bait. The other three are more just personal preferences. And for the final one, uh, you don't need secondary. You don't need this at all. If you're building this into like, say like a Holland, if you actually want to build into an anti-air build, this would be good for the Holland and uh, maybe a few other DDs that are built into anti-air, quote-unquote. But overall, I wouldn't really... Like, I wouldn't really build this any other way. Ma uh, 
the range is going to be good for gunboating DDs. Torpedoes is good for torpedo boats, and reload is if you want a shorter range but more of a reload for for DDs. Now let's move on to the last two categories. We have subs and CVs, and then we'll be done with these worst module picks. So earlier on, we were talking about module one for DCP. Now, for the for particularly for the, the tier 10 subs, the U45, Thrasher, Gato, and Baleo, the DCP one's really good because it gives you a 21 second DCP. But on the U25, it only has a five second DCP. So it's not worth it to take that, and you'd rather take main armaments because like if you take this, you're less likely to get your sonar knocked out, but more likely your main arm, your torpedoes will get knocked out. So would you rather have your torpedoes being knocked out or your sonar being knocked out? And I'd rather just have my sonar knocked out, just to be honest. Now for submarines, I just thought of this. It's like, if you're being ASW'd, right? You're going to get guaranteed fired or flooded no matter what, right? Unless you have your DCP active. So this doesn't matter. And if you're getting shot at, why are you getting shot at to begin with to where you're gonna get caught on fire flooding? Well, and at that no, point, you would just, just pick you know, engine room protection. Oh, big stretch, dude. Oh, and that's how that would dude. go. So just pick with engine room protection for your sub at that point. That's what I would say. For submarines here, it's either torpedoes, battery capacity, personal preference, or sonar modification. Uh, that is legit a... Like, if, if you're not able to accurately hit, like, your sonar pings, that's more of a skill issue. So this is a more of a skill issue skill where you need... If you need to actually hit your pings, like, you're having issues with it, that's just, like, more of a skill issue one where it's like, hey, it gives you a... Make sure where your sonar ping is quicker by 10 percent if you're able to hit your pings then you don't got to worry about that just build into those those two yep exactly yippee yippee now in the fourth slot this makes it where you have fires and stuff it's pretty much a personal preference propulsion some uh gearing or damage for like the u45 i'll take propulsion but on the other subs, normally I would take rudder shit to be able to dodge a little quicker, maybe. It depends on how quick they are. But it gets more of like a personal preference between propulsion and the steering gears on that one. For fifth slot, like why the hell would you need torpedo lookout? There's no point. Like why would you need that? You can already spot the torpedoes really quick in subs. You don't need that at all so don't don't take that that's literally a bait skill or take it i'd love it if you actually took it on a sub that'd be great thank you ship consumables it's a little bit better on a sub uh because if you're finding another sub and you're trying to get that little extra submarine surveillance time on them that could be nice or that little extra battery time if you build into it all the way that could be nice so i'd say personal preference between picking ship consumables or submarine steering is the way to go so you can be more maneuverable or you have extra consumable time and the final one would be torpedo tubes or dive capacity personal preference if you want more underwater time or if you want more reload and that's pretty much personal preference for that one so there you go now for the final class we're talking about is the I CVs. Might just put a knife in I think that's a really good idea. What are you stabbing up there? Stop stabbing it. All right, good. Well, okay, you can you can stab the CV. That's fine. Pretty much for CVs. I think you can. This is fine for Grav Zeppelin, but for every other CV, why the hell would you take this? There's no point. You're never gonna. You're never gonna oh, use your secondary. You. So oh, why the hell would you have you. that? Except for Grav Zeppelin. So there you go. Normally, you just take air groups. You don't need damage control. Like yes, it increases your DCP by forty percent, 
and it makes it where your DCB goes from 60 seconds to 84 seconds. But you really don't need it like ever. Like you can take this, sure, but it's quicker to get. So you can take, don't take this. If you want more DPM air groups, if you want more like tankiness slightly with the DCP, then this one. So that's the best way to put it. Second slot, it's either damage control, risk of fires and floods. If you're playing more aggressive with your CVs and this, but I like having that extra engine boost. Physical personnel would take this one, but some people like damage control. So you can take that one, depending on how aggressive you're going to play your CV. Uh, secondary armament, only good for like grab Zeppelin at this point. There really isn't that much good secondary CVs at all. So really no point. And all of these are pertain to the particular CV, like the better attacking time of torpedoes. This one's, I think, more of a, this one right here, though, I mean, I'm going to call it, this one's more of a trick one. You don't want this one, because normally you're not going to be that in that long in a strike with your torpedo bombers. You're going to be more in them with the either the rockets or with the aerial torpedoes. So normally you just want to take the aerial torpedo speed so you have quicker torps or you just have a little extra longer time for the air for the air airstrike for the uh, attack fighter so either this one or this one for the four slot i don't i don't know why you would ever take dcp there's really no point well i don't know why you did take i don't know why you would take this there's no point like why like i don't i don't get it it's only good for the Graf Zeppelin. Every other CV, no. Like, no, you're never going to. You're never going to need it. There's no point. And there's no reason for you to build into airstrikes. Because if a submarine is wasting his time trying to kill you, 90% of the time he's just going to kill you. There's nothing you can do about it. You'll get lucky. Like, if you're, if you're, well, of course, since the ASW never misses, you'll be perfectly fine. So you don't really need this anyway. She'll be fine anyway. So it's better for you to build into making one of your squadrons tankier. So I'd rather just do that. For the... <laughs> for the fist slot for CVs, you can do either flight control, concealment, or squadrons. Most people just take flight control. Um, some CVs are good to actually building into concealment because of their lower concealment. So you can build into it so you're a little bit more stealthy. That's more of a personal preference, but yeah. The squadron, number of squadron consumables, you could do that. But make it where you have extra engine cooling and extra fighters. So it's nice if you're building into like a anti cv build like a essex that would be really nice that would be pretty nice uh for uh, if you're trying to build extra fighters or if you're trying to get like heals on your torpedo bombers extra heals are also nice too but normally you're never going to use all of the heals like you're never actually going to normally so like it's only good for certain cvs in that regard but this one's like more all three of them can be used. Just depends on what CV you're going for. For the final one, auxiliary armament's only good for Graf Zeppelin. It's really not good for anything else. If you take this on either CV, you're just wasting a slot. It's better to build into speed on the slower, on either like the aircraft that are meant to be quick, like on Emelin or the Richthofen of the Germans, or you're building the more tanky for the Americans um, and the British with like the Malta. But anyway, those are the worst modules to pick in the game for each of the classes. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you have any questions,